What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff with KindleFireWire.com. I'm going to show you how to install CyanogenMod 7 on your Kindle Fire in less than 8 minutes. Can you believe that? I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Now it may take you a little longer just because I've sped up certain portions of this video, but for the most part it's a pretty thorough walkthrough on how to install CyanogenMod 7. Just open up your start menu first of all. Go ahead and we're going to navigate to our Android SDK folder. This is assuming you already have your Android device or your Kindle Fire rooted. So you want to have the Android SDK folder there. You want to extract this folder, which I will provide a download link to. It is the uh, CyanogenMod 7 files that you're going to need. So just go ahead and extract that. And once you have it extracted, you want to just go ahead and open it up. There it is. So you have five files in there in total. You want to drag that, that entire folder over into your Android SDK root directory here. So you see it right there. Let's open that up. And now there are four particular files in that directory that you're going to need. But first of all, let's go ahead and unplug and plug in our Kindle Fire just to make sure it connects to our computer. And once you have it plugged in with the USB micro cable, you want to go ahead and unlock your device here. Just slide to unlock and it should connect to your computer. You'll see the little pop-up window. I usually just close that out and open it directly from Explorer just to cut down any confusion here. So there it is. There is the Kindle. So you see the file structure of the SD card on the Kindle. Now you want to take the CM7 files and drag four of those files over to your Kindle. I'm going to show you which four you need to select. You need to select last log, log, update.zip, and update recovery.img. And you want to drag all four of those over into your Kindle Fire right there. It'll take a few seconds. It's about 100 megs of data to copy over. Okay, once you have all those copied over, what you need to do is just take an inventory, make sure you have all four, and then go ahead and eject your Kindle Fire from your computer. So just right click on it and select eject, make sure it's not connected. Now open the start and then go to CMD, and then we're going to go into ADB here. So you want to go back into your Android SDK root directory, just type in CD and then a backslash. So I'll do that right now. CD space backslash and then CD space Android. Now yours may be different, but I always put it right here. So Android slash platform dash tools, enter, and now you can run ADB. So ADB space shell, and then enter. You should see the pound sign. If you don't, type SU to make sure you have root. If you don't have root, you need to root your device. View our video tutorial on how to root. It's really easy. So now that you have super user, you're in ADB shell, the next step is to type CD space cache, and then enter. Now, chances are this directory will be already here, but go ahead and type mkdir space recovery. You want to create the recovery directory under cache. It'll probably say make directory failed for recovery file exists. If so, that's cool. Type ls, and you should see recovery there already. So that's a good thing. We want to make sure recovery is there under cache. The next step is to copy some files over now. What you need to do is just copy this text from the description of the video or from the article on kindlefirewire.com. Right click, select paste, you should see CP space slash SD card slash log space slash cache slash recovery slash and then just hit enter and that'll copy over the log file to the recovery folder under cache. Now we're going to copy over the last log file. So you want to do something similar, paste this in CP space slash SD card slash last underscore log space slash cache slash recovery slash enter. And that'll copy over the last log. Now you want to type LS and then CD over to the recovery directory to make sure that you have both log and last log there. Those both need to be there. That is absolutely imperative that both of those are there. So once you verify that, you're good to go to the next step. Next type CD space slash to get back to the root. And now you want to type or paste in actually this command here. I'm not going to say all of this. You'll find this command in the description or on the article on kindlefirewire.com. Once you have that pasted in, just go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard and that'll run this particular command. You should see uh, bytes transfer and it should show you how many records in, how many records out. Just make sure it looks similar. Then you want to paste this in IDME space boot mode and then that, that hexadecimal number there and then hit enter and then it'll show write to offset etc. Now you want to type reboot and enter and then look at your Kindle Fire. It should look like, well it won't look like this but it'll look like that. It'll start rebooting your Kindle Fire and just make sure it reboots and then you'll notice the Kindle Fire logo come up and uh, it'll do its thing here. You'll see it flash a few times. That is the refresh rate of the screen. It's just a little off while I'm recording. I don't think this actually looks like this on your actual screen. Now you'll see uh, a landscape view 
and this will open up clockwork this allows you to apply the updates from the SD card that we copied over this is super easy to do all you need to do literally is just press the power button on your Kindle fire a couple of times about three or four times so just keep pressing it all the way through and then it'll get to this next page eventually here and you'll see this right here this is what you're looking for it's installing from the SD card uh, finding updates it'll go through and make all these updates for you and it's super simple once it's finished doing that all you need to do is head back over to your PC and then just go ahead and paste this command in ADB push from the Android platform tools directory and make sure you type that in or paste that in exactly like that enter you should see how many bytes were transferred etc and now you want to type ADB space shell and then enter and then you want to paste this next command in just paste this you'll get this from kindlefirewire.com or in the description of the video then enter and then you should see the same you know records in records out bytes sent etc and now all we need to do is type reboot right there from the prompt enter and then get back to your Kindle fire and you'll notice it rebooting yet again but this time it's gonna be a little different here so you'll see the Kindle Fire logo there, it's, it's flashing. Eventually it'll start looking a little more normal. The refresh rate will change. And then we will see the CyanogenMod logo. This is CyanogenMod 7. It is actually installed on our Kindle Fire. It completely changes the Kindle Fire UI. And notice that the refresh rate changes as well. We're back to normal. And there it is, CyanogenMod 7 running on your Kindle Fire. It doesn't really get any easier than that. Wasn't that easy? Wasn't that very, very just simple to walk through? I hope you found this tutorial extremely helpful. Now, there is not a lot you can do in here yet. Um, it's still work in progress. And one note, the sound does not work as you saw from the annotation in the beginning of the video, but still, this is rather impressive. I mean, the Kindle Fire has been out for like, what, a month? And it already has CyanogenMod 7 installed on it. So uh, this is pretty impressive. Now, how do you get back to a stock Kindle interface? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that in an upcoming video. So stay tuned, folks. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, thumbs up, follow me on Twitter, and make sure you visit KindleFireWire.com. This is Jeff with KindleFireWire.com.